This is the Insomniacs Anonymous podcast. Now with extra strength, vitamin D20. Today on the podcast, we talk about TF2's new matchmaking system in competitive mode, and how it's several years late. We talk about Pokemon Go and the dangers of playing video games while driving, as well as Night in the Woods and the mini NES that's coming out soon. And finally, we talk about why our regular host, Brian, is fired from the podcast. Out of a cannon. It's sure to be a blast. Yes, I know that was a terrible pun. Shut up. Hello, this is the Insomniac Anonymous podcast, and we are actually down a member because the only people we have here are me, myself, uh, Shro, using redundant ways to address myself, and 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 what? And Q Dude Run <laughs> introducing himself. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> nudge, nudge, hint, hint, <laughs> wink, wink. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Dude, and uh, as for Brian, he's... uh Get fired. But fired from his job, yeah. because his job keeps interrupting the idea of trying to host a regular podcast, which he's currently stuck at. So you're fired from your job, Brian. Yeah. Also, you're fired from the podcast, because your job keeps making you miss the podcast. <laughs> and you are now fired out of a cannon. What the With fuck? A parachute is strapped to your leg. Ah, <laughs> uh, where is that meme? I need that one. Yeah, we do. As he looks for that, um, yeah, he's not actually fired. We decided we wanted to let our lovely listeners still have a beautiful podcast. There is a chance that he will be able to jump in with us when he gets home. If we're rambling for that long, we don't know when he's getting home, but at the very least, we're doing that. We've got a few things that we actually took off of our itinerary, just so that, because we knew that Brian wouldn't be the same without him. So, uh, if you're looking for Overwatch talk of a, of a in-depth nature, you're gonna have to wait for Brian to come back. Who knows? We might have a secondary podcast later in the week before the actual week turnaround. But we'll, we'll figure it out. There's plenty of other things to talk about. We're gonna get going with that. Um, so as is typical, uh, let's go over the, Oh, how to say, the introductory, what stupid shit have each of us done during the week things? Uh, yeah, that Dude, is the thing have, we what do. What have you found? found games? Games? Games. All the games? All the games. I've got too many games. So, so now you've got to play them all? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> I've been, I've been playing way too many games for YouTube. Uh, Getting sued uh, by the yeah. Game Grumps. <laughs> nah. Maybe. I hope not. I don't know if they'd we're actually not... sue anybody. I'm pretty sure they'd be like, flattery, whatever. Well, we're not making money off the podcast, so I don't That's think they true. have a reason to. God help us if we try. Yeah. Um. Anything else interesting? Um, I mean, I've been hearing you've been playing Overwatch. I don't know if you want to just talk I've, about. I've been playing the public test region thing with the new character Anna, who's a healing sniper. A healing sniper. Yeah. That sounds like a little bit of an oxymoron. I'm just gonna point that out. Yeah, a little bit, but other games have had healing guns before. Like Killing Floor had a gun specifically made to heal people with darts and that's the kind of thing that this sniper has just it also poisons the enemy so i guess it's a very smart that's basically the gun. tf2 crossbow thing oh uh, yeah it. i've almost mm -hmm. never used that weapon despite my original main medic i'm just bad at aiming so i don't use medic melee weapons or whatever the long right. range thing at all I don't use medic's guns except for the metagun how ironic yay and I'm also no, bad I, at gaming I, with I feel you on that one <laughs> hey. and spoiler alert TF2 competitive came out we'll be talking about that in a little bit yeah they're fucking late yeah all the lateness Uh what have I been up to? Um, let's do a dumb work story. Okay. My manager 
has really long hair and is almost in the winter like when i first got hired she always had this beanie on um mm -hmm. like a hat she always had this hat on and i i never like i wasn't sure if she was bald or like rapunzel hair or what because she never had it off and one day she did take it off and she has hair long enough that it goes pretty much to her butt um wow yeah and so i was just like I just, she enjoys doing that because people are just like what the fuck you have hair um <laughs> but now that it's summer out and it's warmer she tends to have it wrapped up in a bun like a really really tight bun and mm -hmm. one day she was just fucking around our double gate which is where we let the dogs in and out of the play floor it comes up yeah. about like four feet or so like chest high so she crouches down in front of it and just starts like bobbing her head around awkwardly so it's just her bun above the the doorway just dancing around <laughs> on the top like some sort of puppet stage show thing to which our my, one of my other coworkers immediately just started thinking Muppets and just was <laughs> like, yep, 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 the aliens. <laughs> so we, we, we got googly eyes and put them on her bun and so now she just goes around going, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> it, yeah. Did she know about did she know about the googly eyes or did you just like put them on Oh no. No, she put them on herself, so Oh, okay. That yeah. That would be really funny if somehow somebody managed to sneak up and put googly eyes on her, but Miss she's ex Navy. Uh I'm pretty sure oh. nobody is sneaking up on her. <laughs> eh, that might uh result in a broken asshole. Uh she's also uh ex martial arts or uh MMA fighter, so... Oh, yeah, all, broken yeah. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> broken asshole if you're lucky. Um, broken bowels you and asshole. All be in a constant state of shitting. Um, so... What else has been going... Oh, gaming. Um, yes. Me and the lady friend have gotten into a game called From the Depths, uh, which is not only hard to articulate and say... It's just a really bad name, I think, <laughs> for a really, 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 really fucking good game. Um, it's a voxel game, which I know is kind of a saturated market thanks to Minecraft. Um, yeah. But I, I start off by saying if you were one of the people that played Minecraft but liked to make functional things, so especially if you got into the Tech It industrial mods or the Feed the Beast industrial mods where you're making factories and functional items, cannons and all sorts of crazy weird stuff that actually did shit rather than just look pretty. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. game that was made for you. It is a love letter to building engineering game. It is absolutely oh, wow. fantabulous. It uh, the basic premise is that you build your own vehicles out of these blocks, just to make it, you know, simple connection thing, but it's super heavy customization, and other than, like, four or five different generic block types that you use as, like, a building blocks, no pun intended, uh, every other block and item in the game is functional. And I mean functional to the point where a lot of them have a you know, kind of right-click, here's a sub-menu of settings that it does. Oh, wow. And there are hundreds of them. Um, so, but you, you build these vehicles, they operate with physics in the game, granted not, you know, super accurate physics, but still fairly, you know, accurate physics. If you put, you know, a thruster on the wrong end of a jet, it is going to flip it upside down and going to do all sorts of unpredictable weirdness. Um, I would totally do that on purpose just to see it flop around. It's actually kind of a decent strategy because uh, mm -hmm. the enemy AI as well as your own controlling AI, yes, you set up your vehicles to have their own AI and there's a mainframe oh, that wow. you build and everything. Um, it's actually a technique to intentionally gimp your vehicles so they're like slightly off balance or something. Or program the AI to have uh, sloppy controls in it, so that 
it's harder for the enemy AI's targeting to actually hit you. Because if oh, you make wow. everything super smooth, then it's really easy to project where you're going to be, and you just throw your ballistics right where it's going to be, and you get your face slammed in. So, yeah, it, when you sit there and it's actually like, yeah, it kind of, you know, it's supposed to fly in a straight line, but, you know, the physics of the game allow you to kind of go up and down and up and down and up and down, and it's it probably shouldn't work that way, but it does. That's actually okay. Um, so, yeah, this this game is... It's great because you can do it, it limitless options in it. Um, it started out as a like a naval thing, so it was like a battleship idea. You build these vehicles, you you know go out in the water. Another enemy shows up, and you fight each other. And there's you know destruction mechanics and everything, and you try to you know get them destroyed enough or destroy their mainframe so that they no longer function. And you can you know either take their ships and use them. Or you can salvage them for the raw resources, and then you know, the idea is that you run a campaign going up against stronger and stronger enemies as you get further and further into the uh, fog of war of the overall map, and eventually, you know, conquer the map. Um, being that it's a huge map, but uh, they went to the point where they quickly added the ability to go underwater and above the water, and then Ooh. even a space realm. So you can have flying vehicles, you can have spaceships, you can have satellites, you can have submarines, you can have battleships, you can have all sorts of things. You can have you know multifaceted ships that go through all, multiple different layers. Uh, and then you even have fortresses, which ignore the normal physics um, of, you know, left, right, up and down, gravity kind of things, whatever. Uh, and it's just like mm -hmm. a floating static platform but you can tell it to adjust its height and orientation as you see fit using the special blocks for fortresses. And you can do that to... The main idea is to build like bases of operations where you're harvesting resources uh, in the campaigns and the missions. Uh, and then recently they've started deploying land options now too, so some people are starting to build tanks um, and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's if you liked the, the functionality uh, or like the designing of functional stuff or in customization and the Minecraft mods or like Redstone from Minecraft or like Terraria and uh, oh, Starbound. Oops. Thank you. I'm like space stars. What is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, Starbound, or I've got another game that unfortunately crashes um, on my old-ass graphics card that my computer is gimped with at the moment. Um, even though it's a 2D game, it needs 512 megabytes of graphics memory. So my 320 megabyte GT S8800 is not cutting it. Um, but it's uh, called Factorio. And the entire idea is actually to build up with minimal resources a few simple machine factory items to make more simple machine factory items. And then from there, you start making really big automated factories where you basically have this sentient factory collecting resources, processing them, turning them into things to make more factory until... I guess the idea, the loose story is that you crash landed on an alien planet and basically all you have is your like wrist computer and an axe or something and your ultimate goal is to get back into space to get home so you're building a factory that kind of basically uh jump through all the eras of mankind's invention to get back to you know ftl travel or something so it looks really cool i just haven't gotten to play it yet but yeah if you liked any of these games i just said please check out from the depths it's so good you get to build AIs for your ships, you get to build very many different kinds of cannons for your ships, uh, determining what kind of, uh, you know, explosives, fragmentation shells go into it. You get to build missiles that have different kinds of seeking to them with, you know, infrared seeking or laser seeking or specially guided. You even have torpedoes, dumb fire. Um, you even have lasers. There are laser... And then you have uh, laser defense systems you can put out. It's the 
it's so good and they just keep adding stuff the uh, the most recent patch actually added warp drive <laughs> so you can take your vehicles and build a warp drive which essentially blinks your vehicle depending on how capable the warp drive is so yeah i already have like two or three dozen vehicle designs in concept that i've been working through people and people break out like the uh the grid paper and the notebooks to start making designs for this stuff it's great so but i think i've gushed about that from um in fact my our our podcast notes to uh make note of the fact that shro is in no way concise about anything at all ever that is damn right <laughs> <laughs> as i just what that's 10 minutes of from the depths i think pretty much yeah yeah whoops yeah well it's okay this is the part where i it. wish we had a slight video podcast uh i don't know maybe... mm. <coughs> this is an idea i'm thinking of on the spot maybe we can uh in our youtube uh version of the podcasts uh occasionally change the thumbnail image if we're like looking at screenshots of something at that point in the podcast we could like maybe throw up that screenshot yeah we could maybe uh, because I'd have to I, go I hunting really... for them, and I don't know what we're looking at exactly. Because well, you yeah, talked I... about like forty bajillion things, and I didn't make notes. So, well, right, Let's it would be that if, for like, next we time. specifically had a topic. I would... Yeah, like for instance, I really, really, really want to share, as it also segues into our next topic, uh, is that uh, Rocket League. As much as it hates me, and as much as I love it, uh, somebody uh, made a nice comment. Uh, towards the fact that newbie Rocket League players just kind of have this weird uh, attraction to the ball and that no matter which way they are pointed or which way the ball is pointed or going or whatever, they hit the ball. Hit ball! <laughs> is my favorite way to yeah. say it. So, with the release of Pokemon Go, somebody made a Rocket League logo that's in the Pokemon style format and it says, Rocket League! Gotta touch the ball. <laughs> There's a song somewhere that I sung last night, and we didn't record it, and it was a real shame. But I'm I'm gonna find it again, and when Brian gets back, I'll sing the song. Wait, um, in the in the notes, did you link the song, I, or oh, you linked the image? No, I linked the image. It, I will link the, the song. That works. I will link the song, and we can do that. And everyone listening at home or on the road can just kind of like click that and like be, oh, fuck, my ears are being assaulted by something stupid. Or glorious, whatever your it's school It's stupidly glorious. Is. Yes. And so is this. What the you know, fuck? That's where that is. Yeah, Brian took a bit of fire out of the cannon. Yeah. Okay, that didn't take as long to find as I thought it would, but like... I wanted to interrupt your tangent with that, but I didn't like. I didn't know when I should. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> yeah. I tried when I, when to I said at some cannons, point, but the volume wasn't loud. Yeah. When I said cannons, that that would have been your moment. Yeah, I, I missed. Fucking missed it. I fired again and I missed. And I missed. <laughs> and then I took a nap and then I woke up and I fired again. And I missed. <laughs> Okay, that's Game Grumps joke number two. All right, we're gonna have to Take start a, a tally for this shit. Okay, Is this the I'm new gonna... drinking game since Brian's not here to say amazing or awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm, I did. I'm making notes of it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, as we said, Pokemon Go. That's a thing now. Yeah. As of what? I think it launched last week, almost like exactly a week ago. Pretty much. So, it is fucking nuts. Holy shit. I, I've noticed that many people's lives have been permanently ruined and or improved because of Pokemon Go. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty messed up how it's gone from, like, a game about what? catching Pokemon that you've wanted to since you were a kid 20 years ago to leading people to dead bodies and yep. shit but, and and just and, completely and, viral yeah, nonsense yeah. and getting mugged and shit but holy fuck 20 years of pokemon i know right and this is finally a thing yep 
And it's not even from Nintendo. What the fuck, well, Nintendo? It, it, it's sort of. I mean, Nintendo like endorsed isn't by it, the Pokemon Yeah, I was going to say Nintendo's no, okay. on board and like it's letting them do it. But come on, Nintendo, yeah. get on the fucking ball. You launched get this the Wii, VR. and then you got the Wii U thing, and nobody still knows what those fucking consoles are. And and you're making not, a new then one you're giving soon? out Pokemon to other companies. Come on. Like, get in the VR gaming thing with the next console you make, and then just make a Pokemon game out of it. Well, granted, they have they have pointed out that they intend to make the next console more powerful and capable and backwards compatible than the future Xbox and PlayStation iterations that are going to launch at around the same time. Which I My think God. for Nintendo is a pretty fucking lofty goal, considering they've been losing that race for like a decade now. Yeah. Our, our GameCube, what do? Barrel roll? I don't know. Uh, seriously though, if you make another Wii U, Nintendo, we're we're done. We're done. But uh, yeah, no, work is having great fun um with Pokemon Go. Uh, we joked about it, me and a coworker, a few months ago when the hype was starting to get going, that mm. everything on and around our premises should be nothing but canine Pokemon. <laughs> so like yeah. Growlithe, like Arcanine, Growlithe. Arcan yeah, Ninetail, Vulpix, that that kind of Eevee. thing. Though luckily it's only the 151 Pokemon at the moment because I'm like I have no idea. I know there's a few more canine Pokemon <laughs> in the newer versions, but oh, yeah. it's gotta look like a dog though. If it looks like some sort of shape smashed together and just makes strange noises and looks like a rainbow vomited on it, <laughs> not gonna call it a dog. Not, not I just like there to be like one meowth there in this sea of nothing but dogs. That's true. We do actually there. board cats. So for like every like 200 dogs, dog Pokemon in the area, yeah. like one meowth has to show up. Or a Persia. Is it sad that I remember all these? Not really. It was a huge part of a lot of people's childhood many years ago and it I still remember the, at least the first 150. I remember getting I remember... up at 5 in the morning to watch Pokemon before school in Digimon. Oh, uh, yeah. And the sad thing was, is I wasn't even a morning kid. Ash still hasn't paid anybody back for those bikes, has he? Nope. And I'm pretty sure he's perpetually 10. Yeah, that I was mean to ask about that. Is he still 10 what? years old? Which is also another thing that people have brought up uh, as the Pokemon hype grows. is like, wait a minute. Ash Ketchum lives in a world where it's perfectly acceptable to basically take a growing child at the age of 10, separate them from their parents, give them these incredibly advanced pieces of technology known as a Pokedex and a Pokeball, and tell them to go out and start trying to catch and tame and fight extremely dangerous wildlife with other extremely dangerous wildlife in the idea that somehow it will obey you and not turn on you and that if they happen to kill each other fighting or quote knock out each other like it's completely okay and what yeah. what is going on in this oh. world and then there's, like, black market criminal undergrounds for this kind of stuff, and weird genetic experiments, and... Yep. Like, if you paid attention, that shit got dark, yo. Got dark and nonsensical dark, and yeah. more dark. I mean, like, the first Pokemon movie, that was fucked up. Yeah. It was an island controlled by a genetically modified animal, which is fine. That's actually pretty cool, if you ask me. I mean, furries, what? Uh, but, like... <laughs> and then he basically, like, some sort of, like, Hunger Games bullshit on everybody. Like, whoa! Hold the fucking phone! But yeah, yeah if you if you haven't... Nuts. If you're somehow not knowing exactly what Pokemon Go is, it, it's the idea of combining the... Literally, it's using the same resources as the mobile game Ingress that yeah. um, was released several years ago. That's basically uh, turning geotagging into a competitive game where you go out to locations, uh, you know, certain hot points in the map, whether they be like monuments or good local uh, 
businesses, establishments, or maybe a national park or whatever. Um, and, uh, you assemble teams there and you try to, you know, have the most people there. Yeah. And I guess you can hold a location and the longer you have it, the more powerful you you have control over that location. I honestly, I almost got into it because coworkers at an old job were into it, but, um, I don't know. I just didn't. I don't think my phone could handle it at the time, but it certainly can now. But yeah, I, I would hope anyway. No, it sure can. But it, it the Pokemon Go is the same idea: is that you use uh, geotagging and your GPS to go around and uh, use a um, augmented reality, really, uh, to find Pokemon. And then when you do, you the AR uses your camera to like place the Pokemon in quote quote unquote yeah. your reality and then you try to capture it which is all really kind of an RNGs thing with a Pokeball that you just flick at the screen as many times as you can or something like that so far yeah that sounds about right I would hope they'd l later add like different ball types like the Ultra Ball and stuff for now as far as I know it's just the Pokeball and then once you uh, have the Pokemon, you can battle it and level it, level it up, and then you can take it to gyms, uh, which are like specialized locations, and you can try to topple the gym leader, which is usually actually just the, like a specific Pokemon of the quote-unquote gym leader that just kind of guards it, if you will. Yeah, it's uh, literally I, just like a guard more than a gym leader. Right. But yeah. I don't know. From what I've seen and heard in reviews, the uh, actual fight mechanics of the game are a little lackluster because you use swiping to dodge an attack, and it's more based on that than any sort of like select your next attack and like try to play to the uh, you know and uh, what is it the elemental weaknesses yeah. as you'd call it and that kind of a thing and building up strong attacks. So, I kind of hope that future versions of it will really improve the battle system. That would actually probably get me to play it. Because right now I'm not playing it, because I have... If I want to go out and explore things, I'll just do that. I don't need a Pokemon incentive to do it, and I'm not going to be incentivized by going, oh look, there's a Mew like three streets away from me. If there's a Mew no. three streets away from you, there's probably a crowd of people already trying to capture it and failing yeah. miserably. On the other hand, that actually might be incentive for me to go at because then I'll just yeah, I'll just be the asshole on the yeah. corner just filming it, <laughs> going, <laughs> "Look at my phone. There's a Mew. Now look at the the mob." <laughs> now be the asshole that actually downloads it just for that and then catch it and then. Let no one else have Mew. Yeah. <laughs> just leave it on your account to dry and just... You'll be the only person in the world to have Mew and you don't even care. Be like your Neopets, they never actually die, but they're always starving. Oh After god. years and years of <laughs> never actually logging in anymore. That's horrible. I log in every now and then just... And, and get a bunch of food just to feed my poor Neopet. And just to see what the hell's going on on that site and have a nostalgia trip. I had a lot of good memories there. Fucking Neopets. I never got into Neopets. When I got, I got into online it, time I was, was limited. Fifth so. grade. Yeah, I was Dang. fifth grade when the girl that I ba it was it was we had kind of like a puppy love thing for each other. We were really good friends and I had the hots for her and she kinda had the hots for me, but it was fucking fifth grade. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm s I'm dropping f bombs. Fuck, 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 fuck. That's the new drinking game. We're gonna do the um, Boondock Saints drinking game. Take a shot every time <laughs> the f bomb drops. Uh, fun fact: don't actually do that when you uh, watch Boondock Saints. You will be dead within four minutes. No. <laughs> or when you're watching one of my let's plays or listening to the podcast, you will be dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. This is bad. Worse than when uh, Brian's here and he says awesome and amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's 
good stuff with po oh, but there's also bad stuff with Pokemon Co. Like uh, I, th I think you know the the dead body story better than I do. Uh, I actually no, I don't. It's oh, just I haven't read well, much into it. I just keep so, like seeing that topic. Well, then I'll be playing telephone because somebody else told it to me. So hopefully their rendition was accurate. Apparently, some girl, um, either teenager or young adult girl, was playing the game uh, and snuck into like some sort of you know restricted uh, like parklands area or something that you know had fencing around it um, for some reason to try and get near a stream to find water Pokemon, I guess. Um, and she ended up finding a dead body in the real world. And apparently it had been there a while. And so it was like really pretty decayed, but it was like stuck on some branch in the water in this, uh, restricted no trespassing area that nobody really oh, ever goes on. So, um, if she hadn't been there, nobody would know about this dead body. And it, so yeah, that's like an ongoing thing, like uh, figuring out this possibly cold case murder or whatever that was about. Um, and then uh, other people have been going onto highways to uh, try and catch Pokemon in the middle of the highway, which clearly is a bad idea. Yeah, don't uh, do equally that, as by bad, the way. if not worse, is people that are driving to places for the intent of catching Pokemon or happen to be catching Pokemon as they're driving to other places. The point is, is they're playing this game while driving. Um, and, uh, bad. dude, public service announcement, don't do that ever. Yeah, don't, don't. Yeah. I, I went out and I to, will uh, publicly shame you. I want to say, like, where it is, but it's like a public area. It's like a, uh, it's a, it's a living museum of, like, with interpreters living there and stuff. Oh, cool. And uh, my mom and I went into town to do pretty much just that, go catch Pokemon and see what we could find in that particular area. We found a lot of Pokemon stops, a few gyms, each taken by all the different teams. But on the way home, I kept catching her looking at her phone and I had to pull it away from her. I feel like... People just kind of get distracted looking at their phone, like hearing a buzz from their phone or a notification and thinking, oh, hey, I got a thing. Maybe I should look at my phone while I'm driving. Oh, I didn't oh. know the while driving part. I'm like, yeah, she was driving home while looking Yikes. at it whenever she heard a thing. It was like, oh, boy, no, you drive. I will look. I am here. I have eyes. Yeah, I mean. If you have to do, like, because I use my phone while driving as a navigator, but mm. I also have a dashboard mount for it, so... Yeah, that makes sense. I would say, it's the way you're if you're supposed to be using it that way. It's not like I'm sitting there texting on the stupid thing. If I have to send messages, I use the voice-to-speech, or voice-to-text thing, um, which is why people sometimes get really confusing messages when it screws up. <laughs> Um, I wonder how it would pick up mine, my voice. Well, I somebody once well. thought I was talking about menstruation because when I tried to tell it to put a period at the end of the sentence, it <laughs> actually put the word. <laughs> and then other times when I try, <laughs> I had to say like, and then we're doing this, period. Like, as an emphasis to the end of the sentence, <laughs> it, it just put a period. <laughs> like, <laughs> god damn it. Um... So yeah, I mean, if you if you have the equipment to do that kind of thing, because I I ha I'm one of those people that likes to really augment my car. I have I have detectors, I have uh, sensors for the phone, I have a mount for the phone. I'm planning on putting a tablet on the other side of my dashboard so that it can read from one of the other detectors for uh, car information from the uh, car computer. And output mm -hmm. it to the tablet because I'm fucking insane. I feel like these are acceptable things because they're all about driving and they're not things you mess with while you're driving. Yeah, that at least makes some semblance of sense. But, but yeah, sitting there and, you know, 
with your phone in your lap or in front of you or whatever, or just texting away or trying to catch Pokemon. <laughs> Not okay. Yeah, don't do that. You will get into rack and probably die. Fun fact, I see at least one person on their phone every time I drive, which is at least twice a day. Mm. It's kind of... And I drive through a lot of people, too. Oh, you drive through them? Through, okay. literally. <laughs> I, we shouldn't make that joke, considering what's going on in France right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Should I cut that out? Or... No. Okay. <laughs> just, just... If people get mad, I'm blaming you, Shro. I'm not for censoring, even when we fuck up. Okay. With all due respect, what's happening in France is really crazy and pretty terrible, so... Yeah. We it, don't really, really have any information, because nobody has information on what the hell's going on there, but we hope it uh, calms down soon. Um, I know people already died there. A lot of people, I think, the last yeah. talent. Uh, Last I checked, it was 80. Yeah, 80. 80 dead... 16 injured? Still really bad. Don't, that, that's terrible. Anyways, holy shit, that's depressing. Uh, yeah. TF2 competitive, also depressing. It, it's, it launched depressingly. I wouldn't say it is depressing. At least now, not now, I haven't played it recently. Still, it was depressing. Yeah, I don't know, I... The fact that it had some problems with its launch, which honestly I think were laughable, but um, some problems with its launch, as well as um, like seven years late, the TF2 competitive scene came like three year two, not even that. Like really, it started with TF2 and only got more defined mm. a few years into TF2. And yeah, now they finally have an official mode for it, as opposed to, like, console commands and servers you need to join. Yeah, and honestly, I'm not sure how active the TF2... I mean, I know it's still active, but I don't know how active TF2 competitive really it is, the, you know, actual leagues and whatnot. So the fact that the mode is, like, out now, it's kind of like... It's like you go to a party... But the party happened yesterday, and now you're just knocking on somebody's door, and they're like, what the fuck you doing here, man? Pretty much. I, that's kind of how I feel about it. Plus, I'm sorry, th this might be just old guy Shiro, uh, but the fact that the biggest complaint with the launch was that people didn't have the quick play option anymore, I don't, I don't know... But when I played TF2, and it's always how I've been playing TF2, even now, you clicked the server list button, you found a map and a server that looked good with, you know, a decent ping and enough players for you and your buddies to join, and you clicked connect. I don't know what the quick play button was all that used for, because my generation of TF2 didn't use it. It didn't exist when the game first came out. Yeah. So didn't. the fact that that was the biggest complaint with the TF2 competitive, that the quick play button was no longer there, while admittedly valid because, you know, they shouldn't remove a game mode for another one, but, oh my god, guys, complain about something a little more legitimate. Like, Oh, it is legitimate when you get people that kind of just are used to having a button to press that connects them to a game when they don't care about what it is, or maybe they just don't know about how what a ping is or how to connect to a server manually that kind of thing yes. great time to learn but yeah great time to learn absorb the knowledge of the thing that is also in front of you mold with your computer learn what ping is pro tip it's your n connection speed lower <laughs> is better oh god a hundred's acceptable any more fuck I don't know, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing like an RTS, you can have a ping of like 500. Oh, yeah. You will feel the ping of 500, though, so try to go yeah. for like 200, 200 or so, if possible. Feel the ping. Let it, let it, let it, let it, let it flow through <laughs> you. Let it flow, 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 flow you. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I, I'm actually planning on getting into competitive a little bit in the near future, but... I play TF2 so irregularly now that it's basically a learning experience every time you get in. It's like, mm. oh yeah, 
I have to aim at this guy in this way for this class. Yeah, I'm not doing mm. that. <laughs> yeah, when I joined and I was having a lot of issues, I felt like my mouse was too moving too fast, so I lowered the DPI, felt like it was too slow. I need to mess with shit. And I still can't aim. Even after all the Overwatch I'm playing, I still can't aim. Well, you're a pyro, so how much aiming do you really have to do? I have a shotgun, and I use it. I don't aim well with the shotgun. Didn't you have the um, flare gun for a long time? I vaguely recall being flare gunned in midair by you many a time. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I switched back to shotgun, like, I don't know, a year or two ago? I just stopped being able to aim with it, so I kind of gave up with it. I figured vanilla flamethrower was better, so why have a lower weapon switch speed and a flare gun when I could just have a shotgun or a hammer and then smack shit? Yeah. Just take the take the base flame damage kind of thing. Then they changed the degreaser and how that worked, so maybe I should go back to it. What did they change on the degreaser? Uh, switching from and to is faster rather than switching all your weapons in general. So if you were on your flare gun and switching to melee, you wouldn't get the movement, not the move, the weapon switch speed boost. Oh. Yeah. I did not know that. Such a tiny thing, though, so whatever. I just would fire up the gre degreaser and hit my quick switch key so that I watched whatever two weapons I had just flash in front of me. <laughs> and that, then I'd just do that for as I ran through the map, and it was entertaining to me, and then I'd run into somebody that I'm supposed to be shooting with and have the wrong weapon out, and then I died. <laughs> this is Shro's TF2 experience. <laughs> oh, God. I um, still hate the flog. Flog is terrible. Flog yeah. is not life, and you need to go flog yourself if you use it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Got a nine and everything? Yeah, sure. I meant phlogistonator, but yeah. Go oh, phlogistonator said... yourself. Oh, God. It's such that a shit. You are removing like a your only defense mechanism to protect yourself and other people while killing other people. Why would you get rid of that? You can uh, push bombs. Good defense is a good offense? Oh, fuck you. Damn. Why not have both? A good defense is a good defense and an offense at the same time. Okay. I don't like the flog either. I'm just saying that's yeah. what most people are saying. Well, that, screw them. I yeah, don't agree. I, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I offended you or something. <laughs> no, I'm just having fun rolling with it. Okay. Dude, dude angers. Yes, okay, dude, dude Angus at okay. Flagistinator. Uh, okay. Um, oh, I know how we can wrap this up. Uh, just a no. fun little announcement. I am, as I think I've probably mentioned before, a backer for the indie game Night in the Woods, which is an adventure game. Oh, yes. Adventure platformer. Um, kind of a platformer. Yeah, I guess it's still, yeah. Mm, like, side scrolly adventure thing? The the main game has a lot more jumpy jump. Oh, uh, okay. But it's not like puzzle platformer and like crazy jumps or anything like that in the normal platform sense of the word, so much as it is that you have vertical space that you can traverse as the character. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Pat, she climbs things. How it works. And... So I had played uh, Lost Constellation, which is like a supplement for the game. Right. You were talking about? You were I a little alligator Lost girl. And yeah, you, mil you built snowmen, and they yelled at you for being incompetent. Yep. That was funny. They're very judgmental snowmen. Yes. Um. So have... yeah, Night in the Woods, uh, they've been going to... Convention kind of things for a few years now as they've been developing everything from uh, like a demo level to the almost finished game now. Um, and they've been to PAX, I want to say they've been to PAX at least once before. Um, 
I do remember last year uh, they went to E3 with Sony because they pretty like not even halfway through development. Um, Sony got wind of what they were doing and so many people on Sony loved it enough that they convinced the higher ups to basically um, sign a deal with the devs to make a PlayStation version. Oh. So it will launch on PlayStation along with PC. Um, oh, and that's because good. Because of this and the injection of funding and the fact that they're like, um, we like your stuff. We're going to pay for you to go to E3, have fun. <laughs> um, so they went to E3 and, um, I remember getting as a backer, the, uh, vine snapshot of, uh, E3 has this big, several feet tall video scroll that goes around the entire room on one of the main convention floors for like all the vendors and has like a PA system playing for those things. So it runs a bunch of trailers as well as like some of the upcoming special events for the cons and everything. So you got stuff like the new Final Fantasy back when uh, it was last year. So like Metal Gear Solid 5 was up there. Uh, Fallout oh, yeah. 4 was up there. And you get these trailers playing up there. And then you had the Night in the Woods trailer playing too right next to these things. And it was so <laughs> fucking cool. So, uh, I have I watched I the trailer for Night in the Woods probably ten times. Or, not ten times, like a hundred times. I love that trailer. <laughs> oh, they still haven't announced a release date. Dang it. Yeah, no, they don't have it pinned down, but um, they're, they're aiming for this fall slash winter. Uh, okay, good. Um, I want to play it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm kicking myself because I backed at the level just under getting the beta, mm. and I immediately regretted that, and I'm like, I should have got, because I was low on funds at the time, but I probably could have ate a little more ramen and, and gotten the beta level package, um, at that time, but, yeah, there was no way to really go back on that, so... But I'll still get a copy of the game when it launches for free. Ish. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, the entire point of bringing up Night in the Woods is that they are going to PAX Prime West. And they are part of the PAX 10. Which is the... Um, I don't... What is the team criteria for this? And anyway, It's a <laughs> list of the top 10 indie games... Uh, Oh, they, they make a panel of industry experts that are going to be at PAX. Um, yeah. And they ask those experts, okay, what are your, like, top picks for indie game coming out in the next year? Um, and Night in the Woods is in that list. Oh, so, that's good. PAX Prime West is not, is not only going to have Night in the Woods there, but they are a featured game. Wow, that's actually kind of neat. Yeah. For that's an cool. honor. As, how much is this game going to be when it launches, or is there going to be a cost? I don't know. Uh, it will not be free. I uh, okay. Um, if I had to guess, I would ballpark it somewhere in the 20 to $30 range uh, uh, for okay. a new person. Um, but I don't know. I could be really wrong with that. Um. If I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll probably hear what they're ballparking price wise when it gets close to launch date. When I do, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do not, not know. Kind of bummed. I'm all, uh, I've been low on funds for a while, so new games are kind of well. That that's not a nice thing for more yeah. funds now. Yes. You have until yeah. the fall to to acquire the funds. <laughs> I have until the fall to get more Patreon donors. <laughs> or I know I'm not plugging it here. I always just start playing that lottery. No, that's the worst way to get it. And I won't ever win. And then well, I'll just be out money. Could take up a life of crime. I could. Or I could get into gay porn. I'm sure that, I swear that's gotta pay better than YouTube. Probably, yeah. Or you you could make gay porn on YouTube until you get caught. 
I have to be like really softcore. I don't think I'm allowed to make porn on YouTube. It's just gotta be gotta disguise it as something else. Make it like YouTube poops or something. Uh, it's really gay porn. <laughs> That's how I kind of want to see somebody off. attempt that now. That should be like a, a video editing prompt for like a contest. <laughs> make gay porn, but it has to be in YouTube poop format. People have snuck porn into YouTube poop before, so I, I it might be a thing. I don't know. Yeah, I've seen it. It's it's kind of it's kind of funny. That's just like Fight Club level crap right there. Yeah, <laughs> except you're allowed to talk about it. True. True. Oh, and I guess one other thing we could close in close on is Nintendo announced a mini. NES for the Wii oh, and shit. Wii U. Yeah, I saw that today in the yeah. you know news links. I didn't even think about that. It just comes prepackaged with 30 NES games, but as far as I know, you can't plug in an actual NES game to it. It's just Are you virtual sure? Console. It looked like it had a cartridge on the top. Really? Yeah, it looked like it was just big enough to fit a cartridge. Hold on, let me let me look. I've got. Yeah, I gotta look now. I thought that might have just been Nintendo's like a design choice. A miniature or... NES console packed with thirty classic games. Holy shit! It has Metroid on it. Oh yeah, it has the original Super Mario Brothers games. I actually have that one downstairs. Mm -hmm. I wish I had an NES. Suppose I could get one of those retro consoles that's like five things in one. Then again, I'd need Ooh. to buy a game. I'd need to buy one of the games. They actually have save points in the games. Oh uh, yeah, the save state thing. Um. Okay, so There's I could be wrong like that, on the yeah. cartridge thing, but I do also have a game list. So without further ado, the little mini NES concludes Balloon Fight, Bubble Bobble, Castlevania, Castlevania Two, Simon's Quest, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Junior. Double Dragon 2, The Revenge, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, Final Fantasy, Galaga, Ghosts and Goblins, Gradius, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, Kirby's Adventure, Mario Brothers, Mega Man 2, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, Man, Punch Out, Featuring Mr. Dream, Star Tropics, Super C, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Tecmo Bowl, The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Oh my god, I'm buying this. I guess you could say when you buy this, you buy too many games. And it and will upon apparently buying be selling it, for $60. And upon buying it, you have to play them all. True. Okay, fine. No no, no choo-choo? Right. I, I, yeah, I didn't. I, I always it's, forget damn it. choo, choo Damn it, Shro. See, there was a choo-choo, but then I missed. And then you f tried it again, and then you missed. And you missed again. It's always a choo-choo, and I missed. This is number four. Five then? <laughs> I think so. Count? Is that like a five? compound joke? Does that does that still count? I don't know, but I think we made like three in like the span of a few seconds. So yeah, I think so. We're gonna count that as five. <laughs> five game grumps references in this one podcast. Whoop de do. I spit on my monitor. Great. Take a shot. Every time, dude spits on his monitor. Take a shot. Okay. I don't know. Ah, uh, they raised the question of like a mini N sixty four. I want to see that. So you have a little Star Fox on it. Just a little bit. I would buy it just for the Star Fox. Yeah, me too. It is interesting, because, yeah, people have been emulating these old consoles with Raspberry Pis and whatnot for a long time, so it is interesting to see a official sanctioned version, basically, right. is what this is. They even ported it's got some weird, of weird, interesting were... ports on the front of it, too. They're like firewire I, ports. I think those are for the uh, those are like Wii controller expansion things. Oh, you're right. That does look like a Wii controller. Yeah, it said that there was like a way to plug it into your Wii or Wii U and then play virtual console games with it. So maybe that was what. Oh, and it even says, yeah, you can't use the old classic controllers. Because I do have an NES that still functions. I want one. Or an SNES. That'd be awesome. See, that's why I'm sad about. I don't have a SNES. I, I need a SNES, and I don't have one. 
Gotta get one of those like five in one things I was talking about. Yeah, I Hyper those Retron. Would be cool too. Yeah. Apparently it has a little problem with the uh NES port where some of the connector things kind of stick too hard and you gotta wedge it out and it messes up the cartridge or something, so I don't know if they fixed that or not with the later models. So what you're saying is they emulated the entire NES experience and you have to fiddle yeah. with the cartridge. <laughs> Pretty much. I still have an old pin from Origins a few years back that's just an image of somebody blowing into an NES cartridge and they quote, blow me. <laughs> I want that on a shirt. It is on a shirt. I want that shirt. You could buy it as a pin or a t-shirt, and I'm like, I don't have enough money for the t-shirt, so I'll buy the pin. <laughs> Someone send me enough money for that shirt. Better yet, just send him the shirt. Or, yeah, or the money. Money is good. I can buy or food Or just with send that. dude money. <laughs> yeah, he just, just send wants dude money. money. <laughs> send, send dude all the monies. Yeah. All I'll right. then send you a shirt when I get big enough. <laughs> When you get big enough, that's... Yeah. That'll be five minutes statement. if I look at enough porn. If you know what I mean. Alright. Well, on that note, we have just crossed the, uh, the one hour mark. Yeah. So, it is that we, at this point, we say, Farewell, so long, until we meet again. Hopefully, with Brian, who is not... Really well, we fired him actually. No, Who's <laughs> not really actually fired? That's what you meant well, to say. Yeah. Yeah, we we love you, Brian. Get in here next time. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you were supposed to pop in at the very end. So, oh my God, guys! I'm here. Yeah. Why are we doing the podcast? Uh, an time. hour ago. Go back in time and start again. The princess is in another castle. Oh God. <laughs> that shit again. I was convinced as a kid that that game went on forever. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it did. That it was just kind of like they had made procedural generation way back when. Like, yeah, it's Mario like is forever and ever and ever. You're like a random chance that you find the princess in the right castle. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. RNG Jesus is the only way to win. That's Terrible. gotta be a thing somewhere. Someone has to have made that a thing. They packed Pokemon to make randomized encounters. Shit, they gotta make that a thing. That's true. They also added Mario to the Mega Man 2 Airman stage. That's a fun rock. Uh, Wait, should I, can we talk to Pokemon? Oh. Well, uh, whatever. It's I don't thing. even... I haven't... I didn't know that was a thing, so... Yeah, that, that was a thing I played, for, like, I want to say six, seven years ago. Maybe a lot yeah, more than yeah. that. But it's, it's fucking nuts. Nothing nuts. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, listeners, you should all, all look for that ROM, apparently. And we will, in the meantime, look for Brian. And tie him to a chair yeah. so that he can't get away again. And then we'll try not to fire him out of a cannon, but it's just so tempting when he's there I, and the cannon's I don't know. there it's, in the same I, room. I already just fired another cannon. God damn it. It was there. I couldn't stop myself. Button. I know it's tempting, but we gotta like Button. limit the cannoning. Nope. There is yes. no such thing. Those, yes, those are vile is. words Ooh. you just said. Heathen. I know, but we don't Heathen. have the gunpowder for many more rounds. Should be fading out over this argument. Okay. <laughs> Did we even say bye? Like, I think? I don't know. We, like, sang and then that was I mean, it? That, like, it's the most technically, awkward goodbye Technically, ever. all of those words are a way of saying goodbye in that song. Yeah, so but, like, we didn't, like, I, do an outro. That... We didn't do it right. Well, this is the outro. We're arguing in the background. Well, okay, fine. Literally about Whatever. the outro. This Does this make it meta? I don't know. I don't know either. I like to think we're all we self-aware of what we do. Probably? So. I don't know. This could get Matrix-level shit really quick. This is a system, and this system is our enemy. Much like yeah. Brian is our enemy right now for not being here. Does that make Quite him a virus? 
maybe. Or did we know. just take the blue pill? I think we took a. I think we might have taken both. We took and both. Now we're tripping on that. Oh my god, <laughs> that should be like an edit to the Matrix. <laughs> blue pill, red pill. Boom. Oh, did he just eat both? Dude, you can't do that. That's a. Oh my god, my brain. What would even happen? Would you like? I, would would you just explode? Split. Eh. Yeah, you could split in half down the middle. Then just half of your body is wandering through your normal life, and the other half is, like, in the <laughs> Matrix, or, like, being downloaded out of the Matrix or something. And the half that stays is just your legs and pants. So you just have <laughs> a pair of legs walking around the daily world or whatever. You are you end up actually being, like, a <laughs> human that falls out of the <laughs> chamber. <laughs> Oh, that's not funny, but it is. <laughs> it's true. God, we're terrible people. I'm a bad person. <laughs> I am a bad person. <laughs> yes, you are. And this I'm is why we don't censor you. IA, because this is bad. Oh, okay. Should I cut it out by now? I think we've no. gone on a little too long for the outro. Yeah, probably a little long for the outro. The outro. Pro the outro, yeah. <laughs> this is how Shro gets outed for, for dropping way too many censorable things. 